What up, Nami Amuro Fanatics? This is Steven, and I want to share something with you that I came across on the internet. I actually known about this for a while, but um, I decided, you know, hey, um, let me put this out there and, um, you know, pretty much just share it with the rest of you and probably start a somewhat of a discussion even. <clears throat> Um, but yeah, I ran across this article, and the title of the article is, There Were Times I Nearly Gave Up. Japanese pop diva Namie Amuro Grows Up by Tim LaRimmer. Um, I think that's how you say his name. LaRimmer. And Hiroko Tashiro. <clears throat> All right, so that's pretty much the title and the author. And um, I believe this was done by um, Time Tokyo, I think. Um, but the article was posted on CNN.com somewhere. <clears throat> and by the way, this article is super old. It's super dated. And if you know Nami well enough, you'll be able to see why. You know, you'll be able to say, hey. Yeah, you're right. This is dated. All right. <clears throat> so basically, I'm just going to read the article and give my opinions and thoughts. Or, you know, thoughts and opinions. All right. Here we go. <clears throat> Okinawan Namie Amuro was the it girl of Japanese pop in the late 90s. Got that right. Um, a star at just 17, she piled up hit records and sold out concerts in minutes. You know, she sold out her concert in minutes, y'all. Can you imagine that? Does that even happen now? You know? <clears throat> I guess it does still happen. But yeah, that's pretty cool. <clears throat> the diva who inspired the bronze skin and bleach hair now gracing Japanese pop or Japanese teenagers took time out recently during rehearsals for the G8 Summit on Okinawa where she'll perform her latest song, Never End, to speak to Time Tokyo Bureau Chief Tim LaRimmer and Hiroko Tashiro. And, let's see, edited ex excerpts from the interview follow. <clears throat> Alright, so basically the way this works is, it's like a Q&A session, session, and, you know, they ask Nami a question and she responds. So that's how the article is set up. So here we go with the first question. All right, what is the message in your new song, Never End? All right, good question, good question. Um, but pretty much I think that they're asking the wrong person um, to keep it real. You know, no shade of Namie, but she didn't write the song. Uh, Tatsuya Komodo did. So y'all should be asking him that question. <clears throat> but let's see what Namie has to say. Lyrically, it's a simple song, Namie responds. <clears throat> I don't think the song has to be listened to in a certain way. The interpretation depends on the listener. Okay, so basically she's saying, you know, it's up for interpretation. You tell me what you think of the song. <laughs> Let's see. I tried to sing the song straight from my heart and not add too much color to it. Okay, so basically she just tried to, I guess, not be all like, um, and being all over singing the song like no, 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 never end. Ooh, never end. like they do with the Star Spangled Banner everyone wants to over sing that <clears throat> all right um, and she um, responds she goes on to say I think everybody is going to have a different going to have different interpretations of it so you know basically long story short it's up for interpretation all right. Next question. How do you feel, or how did you feel when you first sang this song? I sang the song. <clears throat> it's a, let's see, it's a nice song, and the melody is soothing. All right. Yeah, I do like the song. It does have sort of a very um, tranquil quality to it. Nami goes on to say, Prime Minister Yoshiro Mori said he envisioned 
Okinawa's Blue Sea when he first listened to the song. It's the perfect song for Okinawa. Hmm. I don't really know much about Okinawa other than Namie comes from there, so I can't really say gay or nay on that. <clears throat> but, um, I'll take her word for it. Alright. Uh, next question. We understand the late Prime Minister Keizo Obuchi telephoned music promoter Tatsuya Komoru and asked him, asked him to write a song for the G8 Summit. Did you ever talk to Obuchi in purchase? in person before he died? Hmm, good question. Um, so ba basically, it's the, um, the Prime Minister, basically, if you don't know what a Prime Minister is, it's like the equivalent, the equivalent of like the President. You know, I know in my country, we call it a President, in other countries, they call it a Prime Minister. But yeah, like basically, it's like the person at the, who holds the highest office in the country um, asked Tatsuya Komodo to write a song for him about or uh, write a song for the G8 summit. <clears throat> Alright, so here's Namie's response about that whole situation. She responds, I first met Obuchi at a at an anniversary party last November or December. And that's when he asked me to sing at the summit. I knew that Obuchi had spoken to Komodo before I met Obuchi. <clears throat> So, you know, basically, Nami is saying that, yeah, um, you know, the late Prime Minister Obuchi, you know, asked her to write a song, you know, asked her to sing the song. So he must have really liked her. I guess maybe he was um, a fan back in her Teen Queen pop days or something. Who knows? Who knows? Um, but it's kind of strange. I guess that'd be like um, President um, Bush or President Clinton asking, like, um, you know, Madonna or Janet Jackson to sing a song for, you know, the inauguration. Or even, like, Britney Spears, you know? It's kind of strange, but, you know, that's... I, you know, I, it's just strange to think that, okay, these this person is on the radar of, you know, the president or prime minister of a country. You know? No shade, just saying. <clears throat> Alright, next question, and this one is, you know, a good question. Alright. What does it mean to you to be Okinawan? All right, and here's how Namie responds. If I really had strong feelings toward Okinawa, I wouldn't have gone to Tokyo. Uh-oh. So basically she's saying like, if I liked you guys and if, you know, I claimed you and associated with you, I wouldn't have gone to Tokyo. Nah. <clears throat> All right, she goes on to say, I would have stayed in Okinawa, played Okinawan music, and learn more about Okinawa. But I don't think that I should be a certain way because I'm from Okinawa. I want to do my own music and share it with as many people as possible. I guess I sort of get what Na where Nami is coming from with this, but I can imagine some Okinawans feeling a little slighted by this response because I think a lot of people kind of view Nami as sort of like a rep a representation of Okinawan people in Okinawa, the prefecture or the area. Um, I mean, let's imagine if this was a question that was geared toward like Beyonce or J Lo, you know, and they said to Beyonce, like, uh, so what does it mean to you to be black? And Beyonce responded, like, if I really had strong feelings toward blackness, I wouldn't have gone to, um, I guess, wherever, I guess, the music industry. <clears throat> I would have stayed in, I guess, blackness. I don't know, but y'all get what I'm saying. Same with um, J-Lo. I'll do it with J-Lo. That'd be better. <clears throat> what does it mean to you to be Puerto Rican, J-Lo? If I really had strong feelings toward Puerto Rico... I wouldn't have gone to New York, even though she was born and raised in New York. I get that. But <clears throat> I would have stayed in Puerto Rico, played Puerto Rican music, and learned more about Puerto Rico. But I don't think I should be a certain way because I'm from Puerto Rico. I want to do my own music and share it with as many people as possible. Long story short, where I'm getting at is, I don't know, some people might be uh, feel a little slighted by that. <clears throat> All right. Next, pregunta. That's pretty good. Um, Proxima pregunta. 
All right. You took a, let's see, you took a two year, sorry, you took a break two years ago when you were in your prime. How did you spend that time? Okay, okay, good question, good question. <laughs> All right, let's see what Nami is going to say. Watching TV programs that I couldn't watch before, like dramas and music shows, and watching the news. I was hardly, I was hardly at home while I was working. So when I had my break, I either went out or watched TV. Okay, so she just did some normal folk stuff, you know. Just, you know, relaxed and watched TV. I just went out, you know. <clears throat> Hey, do what you do. All right. Next question. You broke into tears at your first concert after your long break. What were you feeling? Good question. Yeah. Uh, I believe this is the performance, her comeback performance, when she's saying, um, can you celebrate at that, like, New Year's special thing that all the Japanese, our successful Japanese pop music folk go to? And she was crying, or started crying, and they were like, oh. <laughs> and responded crazy to it. <clears throat> All right, but here's her response about that. I had been working for a long time, had a sudden marriage, and gave birth to a child. The fans let me take a year off for personal reasons, and they had been waiting for me. Okay, so, so far it's like, you know, she just has so many things happen in her life, and because of that, she had to take time off in order to deal with the personal things in her life as well just to have a personal life as well and you know she was happy and thankful that the fans let her take a year off <clears throat> and she goes on to say I was insecure about how my fans would accept me when I returned but when I started singing everyone not just my fans gave me a warm welcome so you know she was just so overcome with joy because it's like, hey, you know, people still checking for me, you know, even after I took a year off. And, you know, sometimes if you in, in some situations like some people can take a year off and some people can't, you know, some people, once they're out of your mind, they're out of, well, out of your sight. They're out of your mind for good, pretty much. But some folks in the industry aren't like that. Some folks are staying on your mind still. And now I mean, it's just, wow, hey, I'm one of those people. <clears throat> All right. Next question um cynics thought let's see cynics thought your tears were very calculating because japanese audiences respond favorably to that kind of emotion some people say you plan to do that to raise your popularity no stamp they don't try nami and more <laughs> so they saying basically that you know it's just an act her crying like she was just crying just to, she like it wasn't sincere. She was doing it on purpose in order to, you know, um, <clears throat> kind of like gain people's, I guess, sympathy and emotion, you know. But here's how Nami responds. I can't cry voluntarily. I heard the crowd applaud when I bowed, and it made me think, why are these people applauding me? That's when I broke into tears. I thought I tried to hold them back. Sorry, though I tried to hold them back. <clears throat> so, you know, she was just so overcome by the whole situation. You know, that happens. Yeah. All right. Next question. A lot of ch a lot of changes have occurred in the past few years. You got married, gave birth to a son, and your mother died. How did those things, or how did those change? How do those changes affect you? A lot of good, well, Nami responds, a lot of good and bad things came all at once, but I think I've been through the worst. That's good. Now I want to enjoy my family and continue working my own way. I won't be disheartened easily. So basically, you know, she been like she had a lot of good things and a lot of bad things happen to her, but she's been through the worst of it. Now she's just at the point where she's like, I just want to go back to work and enjoy my family, you know. <clears throat> All right, next question. It must have been really hard for you when your mother passed away. How did you cope? How did you cope with that? Hmm. Yeah, I know that was definitely a tough situation and a 
a tough time for Namie to go through, especially the way that her brother um, lost her life. But here's how Namie responds. And also, she really doesn't, um, I don't think Namie really talks about this very much. And this is probably one of those questions that, you know, is on the do not ask list, you know. And understand, you know, it's understandable, you know. She probably doesn't want to have to go back to that time in her life every interview. You know what I'm saying? Because it was such a tough time. <clears throat> but here's how Namie responds. It was sudden, and I couldn't organize my thoughts. But my mother passed away after she saw my son. I can't afford to dwell on her death because it will, it will affect my child. I have a husband who I can rely on and have a son to take care of. We're a family, and I shouldn't keep thinking about the past. Hmm. So basically, Namie's response is she just wants to move on. Um, you know, she just wants to move forward and not have to think about that anymore. Hopefully, she doesn't move forward to the point where she just totally forgets about her mom, which I don't think she will, but I think she just, at this point in her life, back in this particular time frame, you know, it was just like, she just doesn't want to think about it anymore, you know. And that's understandable. All right, on to the next question. You used to sing dance songs mostly, but your latest song is a ballad and seems more and seems more mature. Did giving birth have anything to do with that? Nami responds, "No, it's just the current music trend. I'm going with the flow." Eh, Nami kept it real. That's probably not what folks wanted wanted to hear her say, but um, you know, I think Nami has been pretty upfront with you know people. You know, she kept it real throughout her career. You know, um. Back on her first solo record, her vocals were not auto-tuned, so they were off-key at times. And um, Nami has, you know, owned up to being an idol, you know, being a pop idol. <clears throat> um, so, yeah, there you go. Next question. How would you describe yourself now compared to when you were a, te a teenager? Nami responds, when I was younger, I was more daring and tried everything out. But now, I'm not as adventurous as before, I just want to wear what looks best on me. So she just took it from a whole fashion point of view. Um, but I guess basically it's like, okay, she was more daring as a teenager, but now she's a bit more conservative. You know, that happens. All right, next question. How do you feel when the younger generation imitates you? Nami responds, I don't mind, but I must say some of the makeup and hairstyles of teenagers nowadays really surprised me. <laughs> now she sounds like somebody mom. Nah, man, you sound like somebody mama. <laughs> All right, next question. <clears throat> you have one of the most recognizable faces in Japan. Do people stare at you when you shop for groceries? A lot of people turn their heads, but everyone is also busy shopping. There aren't too many young people shopping at grocery stores now these days. <laughs> So I'm guessing, you know, she's probably dealing with more of the soccer moms, you know, middle-aged soccer mom types. <clears throat> so they probably maybe recognize her, you know, but they probably won't fan out, you know. <clears throat> All right, next question. The man who discovered you, Masayuki Makino, the principal of the Okinawa Actor School, says that if it weren't for him, you may have ended up a flight attendant. <laughs> All right. Namie responds, I did have some thoughts about becoming a flight attendant, but I wouldn't have gone through with it. <laughs> hmm. What would Namie's career be if she wasn't um, a J-pop diva? Hmm. I guess I think Namie might be... Um... I don't know. What would Nami be? I want to say a nurse, but I don't know. But on to the next question. Do you have any fashion secrets? Do you put wasabi in your hair or anything like that? Nami responds, not really. I guess she don't have any fashion secrets for her. And the ladies, or either she's keeping them a secret. <clears throat> 
All right, next question. What's next for Namie Amuro? Namie responds, I want to get to know more musicians and continue to pursue my music. I want to show different aspects of myself and I want to keep trying different things. Up until now, I sang songs that were known. So all I had to worry about was how to express them. But to understand music, I feel I need to write my own lyrics and compose songs. And that is what I'm doing now. All right. So Nami is like, you know, I want to be a singer songwriter now. Well, this article was published in 2000, and it's 2015. And Nami hasn't really went down that whole singer songwriter route. A couple of moments here and there throughout her career, but overall, and she sort of, um, you know, stayed on the pop idol path. Yeah, you know. Hey, what works for you, right? Stick with what work. Stick with what works for you. Next question, is there a theme that you're interested in? Nami responds, romance because it's a broad theme and because I don't have a lot of experience with romance myself. Hmm. Hmm, that's so interesting. I guess Nami doesn't really have a lot. Hmm. I wonder how Nami's love life is. But wasn't she married when this came out? So that's probably a sign right there. Trouble in paradise. <clears throat> but maybe she just got married because she got pregnant and maybe she didn't want to have to deal with like, you know, the social stigma of being an unwed or unwedded mother, maybe. I don't know how Japan is. I know like in the United States that used to be like a really strong stigma, you know. And as well, I think at one point, like if you weren't married to the baby's father, then you didn't have any recourse for, um, you know, financial support from the father. So that as well encouraged women to, you know, marry their, um, the father of their children or the father of their child. <clears throat> um, next lyrics. Do you have plans to get more involved in Okinawa? Let's see. Nami responds, I only go back to Okinawa for work, but I'd like to have a concert there. Perhaps one day, Nami. Right, next question. Let's see. What would you say to young Japanese girls who want to be stars? Good question. Here's how Nami responds. I would tell them it's really hard and strict, so they have to stick with it. And that's... And that it's not... And that it's not an easy world to live in. Hmm. I think that if you just want to be successful temporarily, it's not that hard. But I'd like to keep singing for as long as possible, so everything is important to me. There were times I almost gave up, but sometimes my own music put me back on my feet again. Hmm. <clears throat> so, you know, she's like, you know, it's a hard... Like, it's a hard career to pursue. So, if you really want this, then you really have to go for this, you know? Um, and, like Nami said, there were times I almost gave up. You know, there were times when Nami almost gave up. But look what happened, though. Look what happened. Look what happened when she stayed on the path, you know? <clears throat> All right, um, next question. Japanese pop music is criticized for not being original. Namie responds, there are a lot of influences, but everyone is trying to find their own style in music. I think it should have been everyone's trying to find his or her own style in music. I think it's just that those styles haven't surfaced yet. I think Japanese hip hop and soul artists especially trying to establish their own style and originality. So basically, she's just saying like, we're just trying to find ourselves within the genre of music itself, you know? <clears throat> All right, last question. What do you like about Okinawa? Namie responds, I really feel relaxed in Okinawa 
whereas in Tokyo, I'm always busy. The beaches are beautiful and really soothe my heart. And there you have it. Um, that is the article. That's the article, y'all. So I think this is an interesting article. Um, you know, you get a little glimpse of Namie, <clears throat> especially at this point in her life, in this particular period of her life. So yeah, I hope you enjoyed it. Um, you know, feel free to leave your comments. Feel free to um, subscribe, thumbs up. Definitely appreciate it. Until the next you know, article analysis. If, I guess I probably should just go ahead and call it an article analysis. Adios and goodbye for now, y'all. Adios and goodbye for now.